Have you ever tried to change a habit, to change a way of thinking, to change how you felt about something? To, for example, start speaking slower, start a behavior or stop a behavior. Have you ever tried to do that? If so, you know how difficult that can be. So in one of our other videos, we talked about three reasons why it can be so difficult to change. My name is Michael Williams, and in today's video, I'm gonna do two things for you. I'm going to give you a brief review of those three reasons, and then I'm gonna provide you with a solution that addresses one of those reasons. So let's do a brief review of the three reasons why it can be so difficult to change. Well, the first one is habit. You and I created a pattern, a habit of doing something, and so it's automatic, and so it can be extremely difficult to change. The second reason can be beliefs, and often false beliefs. So we believe that something is true. We believe that we should do something in a certain way, or we believe that we shouldn't do something. And so those beliefs lock us in to that behavior. And so it's very, very difficult to change, even when we want to, if we have those false beliefs or those beliefs beneath the surface. And a third reason has to do with our identity. That's our bundle of beliefs. It's kind of our self-concept, who we believe ourselves to be, who we believe or how we believe we should behave in any and every situation. So if we identify ourselves as being a certain kind of person, then it's extremely difficult to change. So let's talk about a solution that is relevant to and related to habit. So I want to share with you some very, very specific things that you can do to create a new habit, to overwrite an old habit, right? Or, or build a new pattern of whatever it is that you want to do. We're going to use the example of slowing your speech down. And I'm going to share the solution by talking about three laws. And the first one is called Hebb's Law. And Hebb's Law simply says that neurons that fire together, wire together. So when we talk about this firing together, when we talk about this firing together, what we're actually saying is that those neurons are communicating with each other. They're passing data, it's passing information between each other. And this data is what tells the different parts of our brain and body to do certain things. And so within our brain, we create a network of neurons that are communicating with each other, passing data that determines pretty much everything that we do, everything that we think, right? That determines everything. So in other words, if you and I want to slow our speech down, and so we give our brain a command and say, I want to slow my speech down, we have to figure out how do I slow my speech down? What does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like when I'm slowing my speech down? And then we have to repeat we have to consistently repeat the behavior of slowing our speech down over time. And it's in this consistent repetition of trying to slow our speech down over time. It's within that that those neurons that manage speech, the pacing and the speed behavior, right, those motor functions, it's those neurons that are firing together. This is what we want to do. We're trying to repeat that behavior over and over. And it's that trying, that reaching, that causes those neurons to keep communicating with each other, fire together, they wire together. And it's the, the wiring, which is where those neurons are communicating together so well, they actually myelinate, which means there's a, a wrapping, there's an insulation that allows the data, right, the communication to start happening very, very smoothly and effortlessly. This is when you and I reach a point of automaticity. So if you're trying to slow your speech down, but those that neural pattern, that neural network hasn't been created yet because you have a current habit of speaking fast or feeling rushed or feeling like you need to hurry up, right? That's the current neural pattern. Now we have to create a new one, right? That overwrites the old one. You have to weaken the old one. And it's this new pattern that you're going to forge by trying to repeat consistently over time, speaking slower. This means that you necessarily will feel resistance. You will feel kind of mentally tired and exhausted. You will forget. You might tell yourself to slow down, and a few seconds later, you're speaking fast again. Why? Because it hasn't been wired in yet. The old pattern is still there. Hebb's law, which is at the very foundation of what we call neuroplasticity, which is 
the fact that our brains can change. We can literally change our brains through our conscious efforts. So when you say, I want to slow my speech down, and this is what I need to do to slow my speech down, then you have to remember that that's going to take consistent repetition over time because that's how our brains form new habits. Now, there's another law that's related to this. It's called the law of accumulation. And this is really another way of expressing Hebb's law. And it says that everything that you and I do accumulates. So as you and I tell ourselves to slow down, as you and I try to slow our speech down, as you and I create more and more opportunities and experiences of trying to slow our speech down and of slowing our speech down, all those experiences begin to accumulate. They begin to build up and they keep building up until one day, all of a sudden, you find that you are consistently and automatically speaking slower than you used to. So this is very important to remember Hebb's law and this law of accumulation. If you're not out there creating and building up experiences of you trying and of you practicing and telling yourself to slow down and forgetting and remembering and forgetting and remembering, right? You keep doing that, but after a while, you don't forget as much. You remember more, you're able to do it longer, and you don't forget as much until it starts becoming automatic. Now, there's another law that's very important. It's called the law of accelerating acceleration, and this law is also related. And what this says pretty much 80% of the time that you and I spend practicing something, learning a new language, um, learning to slow down, creating this new habit, about 80% of that time, or within 80% of that time, you're only going to make about 20% of your progress. That means you're going to feel like you're working really hard and that you've been working for a while, but you haven't made much progress. Well, in part, this is because it takes our brains time to wire together that new neural network that represents slowing down our speech. It could be because we haven't immersed ourselves enough, that we haven't been as consistent in our repetition of trying to slow down. It could be because we haven't created or put ourselves in enough speaking experiences where we can practice slowing our speech down. The law of accelerating acceleration says that, hey, 80% of the time that you're working, you're only gonna make a little bit of progress. But guess what? You're gonna cross a line where you come into now that the last 20% of the time that you're working, you will make 80% of the progress. So what happens is you start speeding up. You start accelerating faster and faster towards your goal. Now, the reason or one of the reasons that this is important to know is that often people quit because you and I don't know where that line is. We don't know where the 80% ends and the 20% begins and we start accelerating. But you'll feel it, but we just don't know where that is. We don't know if it's two weeks away or three weeks away or a month away, but it's there. And especially if you have a system like ours where we've seen people go through the cycles and we can say, well, it should take about this amount of time. If you're immersing yourself, in about three weeks, you'll see this. In about six weeks, you'll see it. In about eight weeks, you'll see that. In about 12 weeks, you'll start to see this, right? If you don't understand this law of accelerating acceleration, then what can happen is a person can quit. They'll say, man, I've been doing everything. I've been working on this, I've been trying to do this, and I'm just not getting a lot of traction, just not seeing or getting the results that I like. So let me slack off a little and go find something else. Let me go check out this YouTube video. Let me check out this person's system. Let me buy this course. Let me get this coaching, because I think this is gonna be better. So all that you've done is kept yourself in that first 80%, and you'll keep getting in that first 80%, never really completely reaching your goal. If you have a system, that works, that's science-based and that's experience-based, that works, stick with it because you're going to go through your dips, you're going to go through your cycles, but what's going to happen is you're going to cross that threshold where all of a sudden it starts to click. I have clients tell me this all the time. Wow, it's just clicking now. Man. I'm really starting to get it. It's becoming easier. It's becoming automatic or I'm not negatively anticipating at all. I'm not thinking about the words at all. Right? They've crossed that line because they immerse themselves using this law of accelerating acceleration and using the law of accumulation. Right? They've been out there accumulating, accumulating, accumulating experiences and understanding Hebb's law. So I hope that that was helpful for you. So the question is, how do you create a new habit? Well, what's the habit that I want to create? Let's just say we want to start slowing our speech down. Well, then what does that look like? What does that feel like? Okay, now, now, let me start to practice this 
over and over, understanding, and I'm going to remember, forget, remember, forget, I'm going to feel resistance to it, might not even want to do it, might even have some beliefs about it as to why I shouldn't do it, why it might sound strange. But I got to keep doing it and because of Hebb's law, because of the law of accumulation, that the more I accumulate and the faster I accumulate, the sooner I can get past that 80% and get into that law of accelerating acceleration where I now move into the 20% where I start to speed up and move faster and faster towards my goal. Thank you so much. If you like this video, like it, share it. If you want to work with me, work with us one-on-one, -on -one, which will accelerate your progress often by more than 10 times. When people work on their own, often it takes them 10 times longer, years, to get to the same place that they can get to with us in just a few months. You want to upgrade your career, you have interviews coming up, you have important meetings, presentations coming up. You're going to want to work with us because we're going to help you become an excellent speaker and we're going to help you take your career as well as your social life to a whole nother level where you feel free, where you feel calm, where you're confident that you can say whatever you want to say, whenever you want to say it, and exactly how you want to say it. Thank you so much again. My name is Michael Williams. I'll see you next.